We will uh, continue the debate, but right now it's time for member statements. Member statements. Mem member for, I apologize, Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, Ontarians and people across, the, across my riding of Scarborough Southwest are anxious. Our health care system is in a crisis. Staffing levels are at an all-time low. We are seeing a mass exodus of health care workers who have been on the front lines since 2020, protecting our province in the face of COVID-19. We're hearing about ERs closing their doors, patients waiting up to 24 hours. And now, Speaker, this government is forcing for-profit private solutions to problems, to public problems that people have entrusted us to solve. This is unacceptable. Speaker, every single one of us in this chamber, regardless of party lines, have been entrusted with a responsibility to represent the hard-working, tax-paying Ontarians, many of whom have come from across the world with skills and experience and want to contribute to the healthcare sector. Free access to health care, universal health care, is at the core of who we are as a province and as a nation. It is universal health care that made sure that my family, when my family faced an unimaginable tragedy, that we did not fall through the cracks. And Speaker, I know my story is not unique. Many share this. Many rely on our universal health care. It is a big part of why I'm here today. We all carry an immense responsibility in this chamber to protect the people of Ontario and protect the values that make our province great. And today, I plea, I am calling on this government to protect our health, our universal health care system that makes sure people get the care they need when they need it, and not only when they can afford it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements? The member... Terrible. Barry Ennisville. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Today I rise to celebrate the teamwork and athletic achievement of the Barry Bombers lacrosse team. The girls from the Barry Bombers 15U division are the first Barry team to win an A provincial championship. All the players showed tremendous sportsmanship from Alexis Berbarcher, Kelsey Berbarcher, Alyssa Glass, Amelia Zeeland, Anika Crowder, Carly Hill, Emma Coughlin, Georgia Weldon, Katie Shelfswell, Kylie Cum, Morgan Lowe. Nadia White, Riley Black, Tegan Shutterfield, Willow Davidson, Zoe Masico. But there is more to celebrate, Speaker, for Barry Minor Lacrosse, as the players from Barry helped Team Ontario bring home the gold for 14U girls and 12U boys lacrosse. Four members of the Barry Bombers represented Team Ontario 14U girls helped the team win the gold medal national championship game with a 5-2 win over host British Columbia. Barry families were cheering on Morgan Lowe, William Davidson, Willow Davidson, Riley Black, and Jordan Wellham as they helped bring gold home for Ontario. This win was followed by Team Ontario squad winning the 12U National League Championship game where Sebastian Delon of Barry Bombers played on the team to help bring Ontario to victory. Congratulations to the players, coaches, and families. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Ottawa Centre. Well, thank you, Speaker. Nice to see you in the chair this morning. Good morning, everybody. You know, more than usual, Speaker, my body may be here in the legislature, but my heart is back home. And the reason my heart's back home in Ottawa is linked to this tie I'm wearing today, Speaker. Speaker, this week is Capital Pride in Ottawa. And Capital Pride is the moment where our city celebrates our gender diversity. It's a week where a talented crew, led by the Executive Director of Capital Pride Ottawa, Toby Whitfield, put on event after event to mention that our city is open and inclusive to everyone, including Speaker. Within minutes of this speech, there's going to be a family drag story time, led by some of our city's best and most talented drag queens to welcome gender-diverse kids and their families into story. There's going to be Café O'Gay tonight at the Happy Goat Café at 35 Laurel Street. There's going to be a Capital Pride pageant for which people can buy tickets this Friday. There's going to be an amazing Capital Pride parade. This Saturday, this Sunday, pardon me, Speaker, starting at 1 p.m., marching through our downtown core, and I invite all the members of this House to visit our city and join us. Join your political party, join your faith community, join your community organization. For the first time in two years, let's march and celebrate Capital Pride. And let's also salute, let's also salute the donation target this year, 
Capital Rainbow Refuge, which welcomes gender diverse people from all over the world to our community so they can be their fullest self. Happy Pride, Capital Ottawa. Let's welcome each other to this great city. Bye for now. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you so much, Speaker. Tomorrow, the people of Ukraine will be commemorating the 31st anniversary of independence. Speaker, this Independence Day is like no other. For me, as a Polish Canadian, it is a stark reminder that freedom and independence are fought th through the sacrifices of brave men and women. Speaker, my riding of Mississauga Centre is home to many Ukrainian Canadians who, through their hard work, strong ethic, dedication and commitment have contributed to the cultural, social and economic fabric of Ontario. Ontario would not be the same without the entrepreneurs like the Hordinsky family, athletes like Wayne Gretzky or Tyler Bozak, or politicians like Ernie Eves. Mississauga is home to over 30,000 Ukrainian Canadians, and we are proud to welcome several dozens of new families every week. Whether it is St. Mary's Catholic Church, the Mississauga Ukrainian Festival, Barvinox Dance Ensemble, St. Sophia School, the UCC, or Business Women Pro Canada, Mississauga has many flagship organizations ensuring the celebration and preservation of Ukrainian heritage and culture. I was happy to recently welcome Minister McNaughton to Mississauga for a fruitful roundtable discussion with newcomer families. We discussed our firm commitment to support newcomers from Ukraine with access to education, healthcare, and other vital services. I would also like to take a moment to thank my campaign volunteers of Ukrainian heritage, Natalia Halik, Svetlana Yashchinska, Nadia Yashan, Lilia, Marishka, Vera, and Victoria. And I would like to wish them a meaningful and commemorative Ukrainian Independence Day. Slava Ukraini. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kiwetanu. Uh, Miigwech, Speaker. Uh, I just wanted to uh, take this time this morning to mention some gatherings that we have been enjoying across Kiwetanu this summer. Uh, they include the Sulakot Blueberry Festival, which celebrated its 40th anniversary this year, uh, Red Lake Norseman Festival, uh, Trout Forest uh, Music Festival in Eater Falls, uh, the Kingfish Lake Annual Summer Festival, Muskrat Dam Family Days, Wonderman Lake uh, Warriors Volleyball Tournament, uh, the annual Kingfish Lake Volleyball Tournament, the Casey Tate Memorial Click Cup Tournament, uh, Wonderman Lake Summer Festival, uh, Nibin Ud Udamawin uh, Summer Festival in Webekwe, uh, Niskandaga Traditional Gathering, uh, as well as powwows in Laksu, Grassy Narrows, and this weekend in Mashki Gogamang. Uh, these festivals are a celebration uh, of community, of who we are, and, our, and uh, the values that we have. Th these happen uh, as a result of the planning and the hard work of many volunteers who create these events for us, for us to gather. I'd like to acknowledge and thank the volunteers, organizers, for all the hours they worked to contribute in making these events happen. These events are so important as they allow us to show off our communities but most importantly, to have fun with our friends and families. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Durham. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It gives me great pleasure, Mr. Speaker, to recognize two outstanding organizations from the riding of Durham who are 2022 recipients of the Ontario Trillium Grant. Last month, the Tyrone Community Centre was awarded $10,700 for much-needed improvements and expansion of community programs. And the Clarington Swim Club was awarded $32,800. This will be utilized to expand the club's membership, program enhancement, and club facilities. Speaker, the Tyrone Community Centre and the Clarington Swim Club are just two of 279 organizations across the province receiving these important grants that our government is providing. And I am proud that our government is supporting multiple applications to the Ontario Trillium Grant Program. I strongly believe that many organizations like the Tyrone Community Centre and the Clarington Swim Club enrich the lives of people in the riding of Durham 
while playing an important role in enhancing community spirit. As the MPP for the Great Riding of Durham, Mr. Speaker, I congratulate these organizations for their well-deserved honour and for providing excellent programs and services to the res residents of Durham and the great province of Ontario. Member statements. The member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's great to be back at Queen's Park, and I want to start by thanking the constituents of Markham Unionville for re-electing me and giving me the honour to serve. I also want to thank my family, campaign team, donors, and volunteers for their endless support and encouragement. Mr. Speaker, it has been an eventful summer. To kick off the season, I host an open house at my constituency office, the first in-person event since the pandemic. It was great catching up with my constituents and listening to their thoughts on how Markham Unionville can continue to grow as a riding. I've also attached, attend many events organized by our vibrant senior community, including Unionville Home Society's Senior Month BBQ and Paradise Seniors Association's 2022 Summer Dream event. In addition to that, I participated in local celebrations, some including 20th any, uh, annual Night It Up Night Market and the 45th anniversary of Apple Creek Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank all the organizers for inviting me to participate in their celebration, and I look forward to the celebrating more accomplishments, milestones, and upcoming events. And to my constituents watching, I will continue to work tirelessly to serve and be your voice at Queen's Park. Together, let's get it done. Thank you. Next, the member for Don Valley East. Mr. Speaker, last week the Minister of Health finally admitted what the people of Don Valley East have been saying for months, that the status quo in health care is unacceptable. What my constituents have meant is that ER wait times, when ERs are, are accessible at all, are unacceptable. Not having a family physician for 15% of us is unacceptable. And because of this government, there are too many foreign trained health care workers in my riding who are not getting credentialed. This is unacceptable. Now, the status quo that the Minister of Health opposes is our publicly funded, not-for-profit health care system. Though she asserts that Ontarians will be able to access health care with their OHIP card, make no mistake that the plan for, for private, for-profit delivery of health care will harm the people of this province. We have already seen the harms from for-profit long-term care homes in Ontario that had significantly higher mortality than not-for-profit. We have learned the harms from for-profit outsourcing of public health care in the United Kingdom, which led to significant preventable mortality. And we have learned the harms from for-profit dialysis centers in the United States. We have learned the harms from all around the world, as reported in Scotland, Australia, Italy, Ireland, and even the World Health Organization. The lesson in all of this is consistent and clear. Healthcare must always be about patients first and not profits. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have the member for Halliburton, Corth Lakes Brock. I'm, I'm, pleased, I'm pleased to rise today to recognize and celebrate an important milestone in my riding of Halliburton, Corth Lakes Brock, the 150th annual Kin Mount Fair. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 1872, the Kinmount Fair takes place every Labor Day weekend in the village of Kinmount. After two years, our loyal fairgoers will return to enjoy agriculture shows, horse poles, live entertainment, the Conklin Midway, demo derby, tractor poles, parades, and more, in what can only be described as the Brigadoon of Kinmount. My family has been part of the Kim Mount Fair Board for six generations, and my brother is the current president and author of a book on the story of the fair. Amazing. I have 
I also have many memories of competing in horse shows, exhibiting in the exhibit hall, and when I turned 12 years old, being a junior fair director. Wow. I look forward to the unveiling of a 24-foot mural depicting 150 years of the fair and a fair film festival. The Kidmount Fair has hosted events such as oxen pulls, fishing derbies, air shows, strongman and lumberjack and chainsaw competitions, as well as a few unusual acts my dad recruited, including a mud wrestling team in 1985. Ooh. The Tommy Hunter Show even filmed a special episode live for the 100th anniversary of the fair in 1972. Every year, there's always something new to experience, and I hope to see some of you at the 150th Kim Mount Fair, because I'll be there. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Flamborough Glendon. Thank you, and good morning, Mr. Speaker. After two long years of waiting out the pandemic, the fall fairs in my riding of Flamborough Glenbrook are back to welcoming visitors this year. For decades, the Binbrook, Ancaster, and Rockton World's Fair have showcased the incredible work done by the agricultural community, whether it's growing crops or tending livestock or processing food on their farms. The first is the Binbrook Fair, which opens September 16th and runs through the weekend. Binbrook is followed by the Ancaster Fair on September 22nd through the 25th. Now, the Ancaster Fair is celebrating its 172nd season this wow. year. It's one of the oldest fairs in Ontario. The Ancaster Fair is a huge draw, attracting thousands of visitors from across the Golden Horseshoe. And then, Mr. Speaker, the Rockton World's Fair on Thanksgiving weekend, a fair that has been running since 1852. All the fairs are promising a full program this year, including exhibits, livestock competitions, horse pulls, dairy shows, and of course, traditional food and fun at the Midway. When my children were younger, I would take them to the fair and watch their eyes light up as they got close to the farm animals, and this year I get to take my grandson. Aww. It's important for city kids and adults to see what the people who work in agriculture do. One of the most enjoyable aspects of fall fairs is that they take us back to a much simpler time. Mr. Speaker, this is a time to celebrate Ontario's farmers. They are the people who keep food on our tables, and for that, I sincerely say thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements. Introduction of visit